my background is uh, that I have, I have roughly around eight years of work experience, uh, primarily in the public and non-profit consulting. Uh, and I've worked mostly in India and for the last couple of years in Africa. Um, long journey to be honest uh, I started preparing for GMAT way back in 2014 uh, and at that point of time I did not take any course or I did not enroll in any or work with any tutor or anything of that sort I just looked up online uh, figured out that you have to buy a couple of books which are called official guides uh, and then I just stuck to the official guides and prepared on my own uh, clearly overestimating the skills I had at that point of time. Uh, so, and then I wrote, uh, then I kind of delayed my preparation. It was on and off. I was not very regular or disciplined. Uh, eventually I wrote my GMAT in 2015, early 2015. So it took almost a year. Uh, and I scored, uh, below 700 at that. My score was roughly around 680. Uh, with a split, I guess, if I remember correctly, I, I was Q49 or 50, uh, that's one. And verbal was very terrible, I think around below 30 for sure. I think 29 or 30, around that. Uh, so I, it, was, it was an eye-opener and I clearly realized that uh, verbal is my Achilles heel and I need to work a lot on verbal. Uh, but then I went ahead with my score and I applied to a couple of schools. I was fortunate to, in fact, hear back from a couple of top five business schools. Uh, I got an interview, but eventually got rejected. And that was like a big deal. And I realized that with this score, I cannot, I cannot get into the top school. And that's when I decided that I'm going to rewrite my exam. But then that rewriting never happened. Uh, before I decided to... Uh, join you guys at uh, GMAT Intensive. Well, before I answer that question, let me also uh, highlight one important point, which I forgot to mention, uh, that during the, du before, between my first attempt at GMAT and before joining you guys, I did enroll to a couple of online uh, GMAT preparatory courses. So I didn't completely uh, give up the preparation. I, I was on and off in touch. So I, I enrolled for uh, a very, very popular online EGMAT uh, course. Uh, uh, but uh, I kind of, uh, it was not very intuitive for me, uh, the kind of, uh, uh, the way they explained the concepts to me. Uh, uh, so whatever I learned in the course didn't actually stuck with me for a very long time. And I, I realized that it was a very, uh, uh, it was not very natural to me, uh, their method of teaching. Uh, uh, and then when I, when I joined your course, uh, what really stood out for me uh, upfront was uh, a very, very strong emphasis on the fundamentals. Uh, something, uh, especially in the verbal, uh, something which uh, it, neither I had come across uh, other online courses, uh, nor as, as Indian students, we actually uh, ever focused during our schools also on those kind of skills, uh, like fundamental skills of reasoning, fundamental skills of reading. Uh, so the moment I enrolled in the course and when there was a heavy focus on these skills, uh, there was a lot of unlearning that was happening before I could actually learn new things because there was, there was a quite a contrast that, okay, I was doing these things absolutely the wrong way. So there was a huge focus on the fundamentals, uh, uh, which was very, uh, in one way you can say there's the focus on logic and common sense. Uh, and it stood out for me because logic and common sense, uh, it's very, it's very neat and clean. Right? So there was less clutter in my head. In my earlier preparation, my head used to be always very cluttered with like concepts and processes and all that stuff. So whenever I used to go and attempt questions, uh, 
there was a sense of fear of recalling all those concepts and recalling and being able to apply the process because it was not very natural but in this course because the way uh, the concepts were taught, taught and the, the way there was a lot of focus on these neat clean logical things and common sensical things it was very natural right so now when i attempt questions uh, one there is there is the fear of uh, being able to solve the question is gone because uh, there is a sense of comfort that it is very logical it is very common sensical so uh, this will always stay with you it is not that you prepare a course and then once you are done with the gmat it's gone which happened in the earlier cases because because there was so much cluttered once once i decided to write gmat after that once I, the moment i left the room everything was gone here there is already a feeling that whether there's an exam or they no exam to write this is something which is sort of a life skill which will stay with you uh, because you are now like making it with, it's a very intuitive natural way of doing it so yeah so if i have to give you a short answer there was a heavy emphasis on fundamentals logic and common sense and uh, uh, the skills which are taught are like permanent and long lasting i would say so let me speak specifically about verbal uh, because the quant course is still going on uh, uh, as i mentioned uh, uh, earlier as well uh, the first two or three uh, sessions uh, really set the tone for the entire verbal section because the first session let's say is on the fundamental skills of reasoning the second session is on the fundamental skills of reading so let me take an example so when i used to read earlier whether i'm attempting a question or whether i'm just reading a regular article in a newspaper or online uh, website uh, i used to read the entire sentence or the entire paragraph and then try to make a sense of okay what the author is trying to say or what has he just said and there used to be so much of mess in the head because uh, i was trying to make meaning of lot of information at once what changed in the in after the session on uh, fundamental skills of reading is that there was a there was a heavy emphasis on accruing meaning as you read so you read in chunks read in small smaller portions and make sense as you read so by the time i was finishing a sentence or finishing a paragraph uh i was already uh very clear of what has been said uh why it has been said and in which direction uh the author is taking us uh, uh and specifically uh this whole idea of making connections as you read uh initially i had to force myself uh as a part of the process because as i said there were a lot of things i was unlearning and then i was learning this new skill uh so i was making connections uh but eventually now making connection is is becoming a second nature it's still a work in progress i wouldn't say i have mastered it but now it is at least coming very naturally to me so i now feel uncomfortable if i have not made connections and i am reading further earlier i this this never used to feature at all in my reading of making connections now at least i am conscious of making connections so that is a fundamental shift that has happened in my reading and this is something which is not only rc specific now it is helping me in solving cr questions because the moment i make connection i see the connection is not making sense oh there is a gap and similarly when i apply this to sc question uh, okay this doesn't make sense why is the author said that and most of the sc questions are focused on meaning so it's a very cross uh, topic skill in that way so uh, that's why i i say it's very fundamental right so uh, let me uh, comment on two specific uh, topics uh, or aspects of uh, both the tutors that have taught uh, that's you kiranji and uh, anish as well one is the two tutors have a very different personality so that brings a lot of flavor in the classroom uh, 
which is always uh, welcome because he met preparation is, is quite an intensive preparation and the course itself is quite intensive. So the environment in the classroom is, is sort of encourage you to, to ask questions freely. Uh, despite it being a class of 50 students, uh, the way the, both the tutors have created a very sort of a jovial, encouraging, accepting environment. Uh, I never felt uh, any kind of hesitation or I never sensed and uh, any kind of hesitation on part of my fellow batchmates as well to even ask very basic fundamental questions, which sometimes we call them as quote unquote silly questions. But I never heard any of the tutors saying, oh, this is a silly question. They always encourage asking questions. And sometimes there's a lot of insights uh, hidden in these very simple fundamental questions. So uh, that was one aspect, the whole environment of the classroom. Uh, the second is, of course, of course, the expertise of both the tutors. So, a uh, uh, lot of aspects on which uh, we as students never uh, uh, deliberated uh, uh, while solving questions. But the the way the tutors taught us, uh, they kind of uh, open different dimension as aspects of one particular problem, uh, which you as a student usually don't think about, but like, for example, uh, when I used to attempt SE questions, I used to figure out one particular error, look at, look for that one particular, pass through all the five options, look for error, move on. But here in this course, there was this entirely uh, different approach of finding all the errors in all the options. So like you are extracting so much juice out of one specific question. Uh, and by the virtue of spending so much time, because the process makes you spend time on one particular question, you internalize the concept and idea so much deeply compared to the, the approach I was doing earlier. So yeah, the, the whole environment in the classroom and the expertise uh, of both the tutors is amazing. Absolutely. I think uh, irrespective of at which stage of your DMAT preparation you are, whether you're just a beginner, uh, all, the, all the better if you're a beginner because then you won't uh, form bad uh, processes or you won't internalize bad processes or bad skills and you'll start afresh, uh, you'll have a clean slate and you'll build the right processes. Uh, but uh, very important for people who have been in the middle of their preparation or who are retakers and have not been able to hit their desired scores to definitely consider the course because the scores will bring a fundamental shift in uh, the way you understand things, you comprehend things, and the way you then address and approach and solve those things vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis GMAT. So, Absolutely, go ahead. Don't hesitate. The, whatever money you will spend, you will realize that it's one of the best investments you would have made in your entire business school and GMAT preparation. Journey.